Hi friends, welcome back to Frosty Eye Candy. So I'm going to jump straight in and show you the dried and resin results of this pretty one right here. I'm rather happy with the way she came out. And then nice and close, you can see the details in the cells. You can see, listen, the interference piggy from TLP. You can see him really, really doing the magic there in the modifications right here, which aren't really, you can't see them until you get that light on them. And then pow, there they are. Okay, so friends, how did I get to this? So I've called this Bloom Vines for Beginners because uh, it's for beginners to learn how to do bloom vines. So first off, we're starting on a large canvas because it's easier to do a large one than it is a small canvas. Uh, just because if we put a little bit too much paint down on a small one, you're gonna lose all the negative space quite possibly. So it's a lot easier to get just enough down to do the blow and then some modifications, spin it out, and then you get to this. So how did I get to this? There's only four colors in this one, my friends. Again, we have used this color palette before, but uh, I thought it was so beautiful. I tried it with this and then posted a couple of pictures of this and uh, people on the internet were rather interested to see a creation video. So here's how we get to it. We are using, in, no, uh, in, in a very particular order actually, uh, first one is this one, it's uh, TLP Nebula, there we go, it's a very dark kind of, really dark charcoal if anything I'd say, and it has this beautiful, very hard to describe colour flash to it, kind of a greeny blue, kind of, but that's going down first. Next we are going to be using the PVO uh, Studio Aquilins. Studio Acrylics. This is the uh, iridescent blue black. As you can see, black, no it isn't, but it's a lovely gray and works so beautifully with the other colors here, giving you that lovely flash of blue here and throughout the whole piece right there. Just so beautiful. Okay, so that was the Studio Acrylics. Next, we're putting down another favorite TLP and this one is Glisten. Glisten's actually labeled here, you can see it's semi-transparent, but it's this beautiful interference color that you look at it one way and it's this beautiful blue color. You look at it another way and it's this gorgeous green. And again, really hard for the camera to pick up, but I see when I look across it really quite low, I see this beautiful mauve, beautiful mauvey purple kind of color. But of course, I don't think the camera, let's see if we can get it to pick it up. No, we've just not got the light at the right angle. But anyway, trust me, it's got this kind of crazy purplish, oh, I kind of saw it then, <laughs> purple, purple color to it as well. Anyway, well, this could be Glisten really just interacting with the nebula and the PBO uh, iridescent blue black, which is probably causing that. So we're gonna put another tube paint down now, friends, and it's this one used quite often. It's a lovely tube paint, it's super high quality pigment. This is the golden light phthalo blue. And this one is opaque, as you can see right there, and makes a good base for our cell activator to sit on and not sink so quickly through those piggies, is our Prussian blue cell activator, the Amsterdam Studio Acrylics. Okay, so there are the colors for oh, this one right here. And before we move on to the uh, video, I would just like to mention uh, the new weekly live pouring show I'm doing on a Sunday at 1 p.m. and it's 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. That would be 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and I believe around nine or 10 o'clock in the evening for Europe. Uh, please join me, the uh, joy of pouring with Cy Frost. And if you'd like to actually paint along with me, these are the paints I'm going to be using. I'll run through them very quickly. They're the um, budget-friendly version from the dollar store. Okay, friends? So if you'd like to paint along with me, all you're gonna need is a bottle of Floetrol, the US Floetrol, and the Studio Acrylics. We need Majestic Purple, Cobalt Blue, and then Sky Blue and Tropical, Tropical Green. And also for the I think we either might do one or two pours in the first live, I'm not too sure, but we're also gonna be using pumpkin orange, bright red, and fuchsia fun, along with, of course, for our base paint, thank you, Bridget, 
we're going to be using the white and the black. So that's what you need is these very budget friendly paints from the dollar store and some Floetrol and you'll be able to paint along with me. Okay then my friends, thank you so much. I'm going to zip it, get the camera pointing down and we're going to get on with painting, okay? Okay friends, so the first thing I should say is uh, this is a 13 inch round canvas. I mean, obviously it's round, but the dimensions, it's a 13 inch diameter. And this one is a canvas stretched over a frame. And when I opened it, the canvas was a little loose. And you may or may not know, but for all the beginners watching, a good trick to tighten the canvas over your frame is to lightly mist the back with water. Let it dry for a second and you'll find the canvas goes lovely and tight. So the first color I just put down there, that's the Nebula by TLP. And now this color, my friends, this is the PBO Iridescent Blue Black. And it's ever so funny, blue black. It's absolutely not black. <laughs> I mean, we know Nebula isn't black, it's a dark charcoal, but comparatively, it looks black next to this iridescent blue-black. But uh, even though it's not actually black, it's a fantastic colour that is a little off-putting to kind of see on its own, but goes and complements so well in so many different colour palettes. It really is a versatile tube paint. So the next color we're putting here, friends, this is the beautiful Interference Pigment Glisten by TLP. And I know from the video at the beginning, I was explaining how it kind of looks or has a violet or a mauve kind of flash to it. It's ever so pretty, but very, very difficult to pick up on the camera. But that's Glisten that goes down. And Glisten is actually kind of billed as such as a blue-green interference. Now you see we're adding these little lines here, guys, of the glisten. And you'll notice that it's only the glisten we're adding. We don't add any of the other colors to the lines because I want these modifications to be really pretty and subtle in the background of the actual swipe and only visible when we get that lovely light reflection. So this is the last color, my friends. This is golden light phthalo blue, and it's the opaque. And as I've said before, it's best to use a tube paint as the last color just before your cell activator, as cell activators can sink rather quickly through pigments alone. And they can be prone to warping and going wonky, as some people say. And here we go with the cell activator. Pretty sure I'm just gonna do half at a time because our cell activator does sink pretty quick. Excuse the back of my head, but there we go. We just blow the cell activator out and along over the colors and to create these nice vine shapes, I just do a few little blowouts like this for a modification later and we can get them looking a little more like leaves. But for a first blow, that's looking pretty good. So we're now just going to put the cell activator on the other side and finish the vines. So there we go again, friends, out and along the line of cell activator and then blow it out either side, like this. Wow, we've got some great cells popping up there. This is looking like a great ice spine. <laughs> wow, very pretty indeed, even if I do say so myself. I mean, I know, I already knew this color palette works very well, but I had never done a vine with it or a bloom vine with it. So this was the test. I had the colors mixed up. A friend had asked me to make some coasters for him. And this is the result of the leftover paint. 
So just using the straw here and a couple of little blows in places, break up the cell activator, help it sink a little easier. And now here we go with the modifications. So I'm leaving them in real time, guys, following the flow of the swipe, uh, sorry, the bloom. There we go. And just doing circles, concentric circles around from one side to the other, ending in a little spiral to give you that lovely movement in the middle there. So again, following the line, just spirals going all the way around and then into the bloom just to include it and incorporate it nicely. Now let's just do some more modifications, make these look a little more like leaves. But the cells we have in either side are just really quite spectacular. Excellent, just gently dragging out the center points of these little bloom blowouts, making them into leaves, just gently dragging through the top layers of paint. Excellent, it's looking really great. And I couldn't be happier with those modifications in the negative space. I have a feeling this is gonna come out well. So, I know from more experienced people, we know what I'm doing here, but for those work, watching for the first time, I'm, I'm doing what we call wetting the edges. So we just get a little bit of the pillow paint there on our finger, make sure the pillow is going all the way to the edge and just wetting the edge of the actual canvas because this will allow the paint to move nicely and freely over and down the edge onto the board where we can catch all the excess without making a big splattery mess. Well, excellent. And now we're gonna go in for the first spin. Again, for the first time, people that are watching for the first time, I do love leaving this part in real time because it really does help you learn if you see how long and how fast I spin for. I let my pieces spin for a little longer than usual just because I really like to give that paint a good chance to meet the edge and flow down over nicely and hopefully give us some cells. So here's a nice close up of, of the piece after the first spin. Looking very good, very pretty. And I love the way the glisten is just giving us a little flash of green there in the negative space. Wow, there we go. There's a little flash of the piggies and how they work. Looking rather good. Just letting the piece move over the canvas a little bit so we have a nicer proportion. Seeing how much more movement we've got and going in for a second spin. Again, leaving in real time, friends. I really don't know how you're supposed to learn unless you can see things how they're done in real time. Wow, wow. So here's a nice close up for you, my friends. Looking absolutely beautiful. It's grown nicely over the canvas. The composition is really nice and pleasing to the eye. Oh, wow. And there you go. Some fantastic interference piggies and paints working together nicely there. We still had a little bit of movement, so one last final spin, and I think we'll be there, friends. It's always tempting to leave it at an earlier stage, but if we leave too much paint on, we know what's going to happen. It's going to crack when it dries, or more than likely, it's going to crack when it dries. Wow, really beautiful. Looks great, we've got hardly any movement. So here's the nice close up, my friends. Thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe. Share if you like what you see here and happy pouring.